In this video, I'm going to go over the entire contents of my chest pack for a typical day of winter steelhead fishing. Tomorrow will be the first time I can get out for 2023. I spent all of December filming and editing the Steelhead December series, which was a huge success. Well, I got a question from one of my viewers, Zeus, and I'll read you what he says. He says, you should do a video on what you typically carry in your chest pack. Well, here you go, Zeus. That's a great question. Even though I kind of covered it in the preparation for steelhead season, I'm going to do just a quick, I'll call it a gear dump like they do in hunting. And I'm just going to show you what's in every single pocket on this chest pack. So let's get started here. So to start out with, I've actually done a gear review on this chest pack. It's an Umqua Overlook 500. I'll put the link above if you want to see like all of the details of the actual pack, but I'm just going to start from the front and move my way back to show you everything that I have on my chest pack and inside. So to start out with, I have my brand new Hero 11 GoPro on the front. Tomorrow will be the first time I'm going to be able to use that and try that out. So I'm excited for that. But let's go into these pockets on the front. This pocket right here, I have a tape measure. Now, if you catch a wild fish, and if you have a catch and release net to where you can leave that fish in the water, I use this to measure the girth and the length. And that way you can come back home, plug that in, those numbers into a steelhead calculator, and you can get an approximate weight on a steelhead. So I always have one of those in that front pocket so it's easily accessible. Doesn't look like I have anything on the other pocket right now. So let's go ahead and there's two compartments. There's a front compartment and a rear compartment, which is the larger section, but let's start with the front. So I'm gonna open that up. Now I reloaded this since the steelhead preparation video because tomorrow the water's still gonna be pretty high. The gear that I had set in here was kind of like a medium to lower flow or medium to lower flow gear. And so I changed out my beads from like 12s and 14s to 14s and 16s because it's gonna be a lot more water. So these are the beads that I have in here for tomorrow. I've got some 14 and 16 arrow baits, those are the Hawken beads, and I'm putting bright colors in here. Like you can see I've got some some of the bright orange, and then I've got this, what they call the steelhead pink, which is that pink. It's similar to sweet pink cherry, but we'll see. I've actually got one of these in a 16 millimeter rigged up on my rod already. I've also got some cerise, which is that really bright pink. I've got some DROs, Kind of like in Steelhead Lunatic, I have some of those beads, and those are 14s in the hex. So I'm gonna carry some of those, and of course I'm gonna have some BNR Sweet Pink Cherries. I'm gonna carry some worms tomorrow. It's gonna be raining all day, so I have some three and a half inch bubblegum WFOs, and I'm just gonna end up rigging those on a jig head, white jig head. Of course, I've got my other favorite color of worm, which is Pink Haze by Mad River. These are three inch, so I've got some of those in here. I've actually got what's remaining of the pack from last year, so I have both of those in here. So continuing on, you can see there's multiple compartments. So let's start up here in the front. That's where I keep my spinners and spoons. So I've got some, some little Cleos in there, and I've got two number four of the white matte silver black body R&B spinners. Those are number fours if I didn't say that. And some number four polished brass and black just in case. I haven't seen the river clarity, so I generally use the brass when the river's a little bit clearer. So that's in that front pouch. I'm gonna put those back. I'm gonna try to put these back as I go. I know it's kind of boring for you, but. So moving to the next pocket right here. So when you buy any kind of tackle, oftentimes you get these little Ziploc bags. And I bet you a lot of people just throw them in the garbage. Well, what I use them for is I pre-cut leaders, like right here. This is for fishing butlers, the little package for fishing butlers. But on the back here, I've, writ I've written, on December of 2022, I put 10 foot of 12 pound ultra green leader in here. That way, if I need to reset up a bead rig, I have 10 feet of 12 pound test and I don't have to actually carry a spool. And then I just have some various different leaders. I've got 10 foot of 10 pound ultra green. Got a couple of those. I've got two or two of these little, uh, they're Roscoe barrel swivel packages, but I have 12 foot of 15 pound P-Line CXX in there. 
And then I've got another one with some 10, some 10 pound ultra green. So that's just a way that you can store leader material and you don't have to actually carry the spools which are a little bulkier and they're already cut to size. So now I'm gonna move back to this back portion here. I've got a little tiny Gerber knife just in case I do catch a hatchery fish. I don't catch very many because the rivers I fish are, are primarily wild runs, but I always have a knife with me. Now in this back pocket, these are kind of mesh pockets back here. I have my Dave's Tangle Free stick weights and I've already got them rigged up with the Tangle Free method, which is a split ring with two barrel swivels on each one. That way if I hook or if I lose my weighting system, I can just tie another one on, tie on a leader and I'm fishing. I don't have to monkey around with putting a split ring on one of these and two barrel swivels. But I've got some, I don't even really need to take these. These are eighth ounce. There's no way I'm gonna be fishing eighth ounce tomorrow. But I've got some three eighths, half ounce stick weights, and my quarters. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those back in there. In this other pocket here, I actually carry an extra SD card for my GoPro. I just figured I'll tell you everything that's in here. I've also got some business cards in case I run into somebody on the river and they want to know what the heck I'm doing. So I got some rage fishing business cards that my daughter Haley had made up for me. So that is everything in that front compartment. I'm going to go ahead and put this stuff back really quick and we'll move back. I don't really like storing my beads in a separate container. I used to do that and some of the bead manufacturers, the dyes will bleed onto other beads and other things in the box. So I just, I just leave them in plastic packages. So I've got 14 and 16 millimeter sweet pink cherries as well as the, the arrow baits, which are the Hawken beads. All right, so moving on to the back portion here. So inside here, it's got some mesh pockets. The first mesh pocket, I have one of these little tiny stream lights. What's nice about these is you can actually use them for like a headlamp, but you can actually use it. Is it even on? No. Okay. So you can see you can use it as a headlamp and just is just clip it on your on your cap. And this is powered with a one AAA battery. It's pretty bright for just a little tiny flashlight and it doesn't hardly weigh anything. But sometimes I fish right till dark, so I want a flashlight with me. So let's see, what do I have on the other side here? Oh, just in case uh, I deal with frozen guides, I have some Stanley's Ice Off Paste. If you watch Steelhead Adventures Part 1, you know that we dealt with iced up guides, and I have that in the truck, and that didn't help me out much. So moving on, I've got two boxes, and I've got two pips boxes and that's all I have in the bigger compartment. Let me just show you what are in the boxes and the pips boxes. So I have some liters tied up. This is 15 pound fluoro fluorocarbon. It's already got the T-stops installed and these are one aught Skeena blood run hooks. Tomorrow it's gonna be big water so I'm gonna be fishing some heavier equipment so I'm gonna go up to 15 pound test. On New Year's Day steelhead last year, I lost two fish because I was fishing with 10 pound test line. So I'm gonna be fishing mostly with 15 pound test tomorrow and I've got several of these tied up. But just in case the water is not quite as crazy as I think it's gonna be, I've got also, this is some 12 pound fluorocarbon and it's Seeger, it's the steelhead trout version. And I've got some number one Skeena hooks on these. You can see that I've already got the T-stops installed. That's how I carry my leader materials. And I have probably about 10 to a dozen of those tied up at any given time. So moving on to the boxes. So one of my boxes, I actually had to change out the floats in here. Inside here, I have got there are the AF5 aero floats. Because I'm gonna be dealing with bigger water tomorrow, I'm gonna to have to use heavier weights. So I've got a 3 8 ounce, got two of those, and I've got two half ounce AF5s. These are the high visibility, so the the black with the fluorescent yellow. I always carry some extra Dacron in case my bobber stops come off. I can actually just tie one of these on. It's essentially kind of like a uni knot. Inside here I've got beads. I've got more Dacron bobber stops and I've got some 
rubber bobber stops that I, those are the ones that I use underneath my float so that I don't lose those floats. So that's what I have in that and that's for my bead fishing rig. So again, because it's going to be big water tomorrow, this is my box that has my quarter ounce jigs in it. So inside here, I've got a bunch of nightmare jigs. I've got some jig heads for using with pink worms. These are quarter ounce. These are all arrow jigs by Hawk and Fishing. I do have some black and red. I can't remember the actual number on this jig, but it's the Marabou series. Just in case the water is clear and maybe it, it's, it gets sunny, I can put a black and red jig on. They're a little bit bigger profile. And then I've got some Bomac, just the, we used to call this the money jig. It's the pink and white Bomac bead jig, but those are quarter ounce as well. So those are the jigs that I have in this box. Go ahead and seal that up. Now, if you've watched all my videos, you know I carry a whistle so that if I'm with somebody and I want to get their attention and they're down the river, I can blow the whistle. But really, this is also a great safety device. It doesn't weigh hardly anything and it doesn't take up much space. So get a whistle. It's just a safety thing. If you end up falling down, hurting yourself, you can blow the whistle and get somebody's attention. Even though I generally use it to get the attention of my fishing buddies when I have a fish on. So on the other side here, I have a boomerang tool. These things are awesome. They cut not only just regular line, but they also cut braid real easily. And I have my inReach. It's a Garmin inReach satellite messenger. I always take this with me in case, especially when I'm fishing alone, if I fall down, all I have to do is hit the SOS and it sends a satellite message. Garmin will contact the local EMS and they will know right where I'm at. And I can actually start texting them if I'm able to, but I have that with me, especially when I'm fishing alone. So now let's turn this thing around and kind of look at this back pocket here. Now, this is the flat panel. There's, it also comes with a backpack portion. I don't like using the backpack portion because it kind of interferes with my net system. So on the back here is the, my net magnet. And if you watch the videos, you know that I use these catch and release nets by Fraybill. And all of this equipment, I should say, I will put links down below if you're interested in. You wanna make sure to get the magnet. It's called the strongest net magnet. The first magnet I ever had was just a cheap one and my net constantly fell off. But this is strong enough that it takes some pretty good pressure to pull that off. And also, because it's so powerful, if you just if you have your chest pack on and you just reach around to, to put your net on, it can find that other portion of the magnet real easily. And then I just, I hook the lanyard of my net to a leash, which is on my actual wading belt. So that's what this magnet here is for. So now I'm gonna show you, just in the back here, I just have a couple things. I like to, I don't like to store a lot of stuff in here because I'm driving and I don't want that pushing against my back. It, just when I'm running in between spots, it's not like I wear this over to the river. So inside, I have an, a couple extra AF7 floats. Because it's big water tomorrow, I'm gonna to be using these bigger fixed floats for my jig fishing. So I have two extras with me. They're a little too fat to fit in those little boxes that I like to use for my jig fishing. So those are gonna be in the back. And the, the last thing that's in here is a stringer. And I guess a piece of straw that has probably been in there forever. So this stringer is just kind of a wide material stringer. I don't catch a lot of hatchery fish and I certainly don't keep a lot of them. If they're, you know, if they look like they're a little bit rough, I let them go. But you want one that's pretty thick. Trust me on this, if you have to carry a steelhead, even if it's a small five or six pound steelhead for any distance and you've got that wrapped around your hand, you don't want one of those little blue ones. So I keep a stringer with me in this back portion because I don't generally need it very often. Everything in the back portion, of course, is harder to get to because you're going to have to pull your chest pack off completely to get to it. All right, so there you have it. That's everything in my chest pack for a typical day of winter steelhead fishing. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment field. I'll get back to you and I'll put all of the links down below in the description field. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. Turn on the bell so you don't miss future videos. During the steelhead season, I try to put out a new video every Friday at 6 p.m., but if I don't have something of quality, I'm just going to skip that week. So just bear with me. I'm going to do the best I can this year. If I earned it, give me a thumbs up. That helps me on YouTube as well. But I'm going to go get the rest of my stuff together, and I can't wait to get out on the river tomorrow. So I'll see you on the next one.